So one of the things that uh, exploded 3D printing into mass consciousness was the shot heard around the world. This goes back a little while. You may have read about it. You might have seen the headlines, but a fellow called Cody Wilson printed himself, I guess on behalf of himself and his organization, a plastic gun and fired it. He then put the coordinates, the plans for this kind of printing online, and before the authorities could shut him down, 100,000 people downloaded these instructions. Why Cody did that is something that I will find out by having a little chat with him. This is Cody Wilson. How are you, Mr. Meeker? Yeah. Should we sit, Cody? Are you feeling Can we? Good? Would that be all right? Sure. Or would you prefer to stand? No, no, we're good. Okay. Yeah, let's have a seat. So, as far as I understand, you are not a technologist. You're a student of the law. So, can you tell me how you came to this world and why you chose a gun as the first expression of it? I don't know what a technologist is, and in a sense, I think I'm excited at the possibility that I could be one now. What's the difference in the end, you know, if you're able to achieve it? But right, I, that's how I would characterize myself too, uh, as a student of the law and political philosophy, politics generally, social theory, uh, these kinds of fields. And, and the 3D printer to me was fascinating because it looked like it could contest the definitions of certain social and political spaces. It could be a litigious instrument. Uh, and then also I, th I thought that it held certain promises beyond supplementing traditional manufacturing, uh, actually taking some of that space into new, oh, what's the right word? Basically challenging the, the mode of production itself. And that would have attendant economic, social, and political consequences, which I was so eager to pursue. But why did you choose a gun? I, th I think the gun represented the most potent and still does, probably. Yeah, I mean, it's arresting. It's just arresting. I, I realized that the first time we thought about it. Uh, my partner, Ben, realized it too. What if you could 3D print a gun? And there's all this rhetoric, and we, we just got a, a historicity of 3D printing, right? There's all this rhetoric about a revolution of manufacturing. And you hear it all the time. In fact, it's the advertising buzzword. It's what sells you the retail 3D printer. Oh, a revolution, a revolution. Well, what does that word mean if not the kind of upsetting, subversive, fundamental shifting uh, implications that something like the distributed personal production of firearms might entail. Uh, it seems almost uh, an obvious consequence to me, and so something we pursued. So, um, your motive was not as a member, say, of the right wing who believes in the right to bear arms, but rather an attempt to declare freedom of information? I think. And, and you might laugh at this, but I think this is an exercise in proper leftist politics. I think this is an exercise in, this is a real political act. This isn't participating in what Ranciere calls the police politics. I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, we should really write our congressman and, and ask for the freedom to print guns. I'm saying, no, I'm contesting the space and what, what is said or what is um, approved um, to be done with that device. But isn't it true that you've been quoted as saying you believe everyone should have a right to have automatic weapons? Oh, yeah. No question. In fact, beyond that, you know, uh, uh, certain regimes classify certain weapons as weapons of mass destruction. A uh, grenade, for instance, a grenade launcher. Uh, I don't think that there are workable regimes or even ethical regimes that can really disclose that space away from people anymore uh, in any justifiable sense. I think you should be, be able to own any category of weapon, should be able to produce any category of weapon. Uh, in the absence uh, of being a judge, a kind of immediate threat, an individual articulable threat, a harm uh, to your community, to other people, a judge by either a jury of your peers or, or you know, a judge himself. I don't believe in wholesale proscriptive, uh, yeah, proscriptive measures against classes of people. It's, n it's not a workable political strategy. You, therefore, do not believe that the state should have the monopoly of violence in a society. This is exactly the point of Defense Distributed. Defense Distributed was organized as a, an anti-monopolist group. I think, anti, uh, I think monopolism and monopolies are, are inappropriate, unjust, evil organizations. The idea in the end is that there won't be a monopoly of violence uh, and that distributed manufacturing certainly means things like 
the distribution of the implements of violence itself. Okay, I'm trying to follow this. And t tell us a little bit about your organization. Defense Distributed is the name of the organization. And the name of your website is? Uh, it was defensedistributed.com.org, defdis.org. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to hawk it. In a sense, the, um, the project has been completed. Uh, but, but let me put it this way. I mean, if the 3D printer suggests to me the historical transcendence of the state, of the nation state specifically, and I, I think even in, in ways that we, we might all agree, the nation state is dissolving. The traditional institutions are, are all dissolving. Um, in their place, what's filling the vacuum is something much scarier. I don't think instant human liberty is coming in, into being. In, in fact, it seems to be something like a, a transpolitical permanent state of emergency, you know, the secret laws, the, uh, the technological kind of coup against democratic control. I mean, we all know we're being watched and, and organized and kind of measured. I think that technologies are defeating democratic control on both sides of what, this left-right paradigm. Yes. I think our, our vision represents the transcendence of the state toward the empowerment of the individual and not toward his total domination. Are you intending to put any other 3D devices or parts up online for mass distribution? Uh, well, it's a little bit more complicated than you might think. I, I'd been operating a website since December of 2012 where we had gun parts, functional gun parts, receivers, magazines, available for download for many months. In fact, we had already approached a million downloads of those components before we released the Liberator pistol, which was the world's first, I guess, working pistol printed on a 3D printer. That was downloaded 100,000 times. It was taken off of our site, but I mean, it's all over the internet. What happened was, and it was something very subtle, and it's something that hasn't come out in the, in the media yet. One, because I, I haven't actually been commenting that much on it. I'm engaged in a, in a dispute with the United States State Department. But what they did... <laughs> <laughs> no, I know it. I know it, right? Yeah, sure. What they did was something very subtle. I mean, go back, you can read the letter that they sent to me. It's on Wikipedia now. I, I tried to release it into the public domain immediately. Yeah, go figure, right? So, the, it was the first time they an, enunciated and wrote in, into writing their policy that disclosures of technical data, not just technical data at the behest of a government agency or according to a government contract, disclosures of private technical data, even related to the United States munitions list, and this is a wide-ranging list, um, would require government approval, both before they can be cleared to be released online and to even be online. The we've, we've started what I think is the first significant, well, the second stage of, of the, f the battle for the files online, right? We had the MPAA, RIA, the file-sharing battles of the last decade, where there were liquid markets for you know, ethereal goods, movies, music, entertainment. I think we started the physical battle, as the Pirate Bay terms uh, the files. Down there can be liquid markets for objects that can be digitized. Everything will be digitized. Everything will be transferred. The police structure is establishing itself for the control and the gateway uh, of control of who can, con who can participate in the flow and the flows of these information. Um, that's scary to me. When I first heard about this, I mean, people were horrified because um, this news came out about the same time as that Sandy Hook episode, right? That mass murder in the school, and we've had the Boston Massacre and all kinds of other incidents, and people thought, this is horrific. At the same time, a single-shot plastic gun is not exactly going to be the weapon of choice of someone who wants to kill lots of other people. So what you're doing is in the nature of a political statement, right? Rather than trying to project a company that might <laughs> actually benefit from it. No, I hope very much that it's, uh, one, it's been the, the best way I, uh, possible to mainstream certain anarchist philosophy. I think anarchism got mainstreamed a little bit, especially with my generation. When I do go speak to people, I just try to radicalize students and tell them not to join the government, don't vote you know, practice counter-economics. I mean, these are the essential tasks for me, and I, I think it's a, it's a way of letting me talk about those things. Um, Crypto-anarchism is something that I really like to get down to at the end of the day. But yeah, yeah, this, this was a symbolic, I think, challenge to the security state. Mm. And I'll, I'll give you a kind of an evidence of it. Um, for months, I was saying, and this was months after Sandy Hook, once we inserted ourselves into the, the gun debate in the United States, for months I was saying, what kind of system could stop the flow of a single shot downloadable pistol, because the idea was, well, how will the authorities handle this? And I said, no, they're not going to be able to handle it. You will have to accept the general idea that this will be possible. 
this is going to happen. And you say, uh, you know, the Department of Homeland Security, the United States Department of Homeland Security issues a memo, an interagency memo, which was leaked, thankfully. Um, that's another thing, you know, the leaking of information, it can't be stopped. So they release this memo and they say, you know, unfortunately, there seem to be no possible techniques or technologies to stop people from not only downloading it, but reproducing it. And it, my answer is, how could it be otherwise? What system could, could achieve that? Well, uh, a Chinese system, a state puts enormous resources behind a massive structure of censorship. On the other hand, that's not how we're supposed to live in the West. I guess that's one of the points you're trying to make. I, I think that's the, the consensus definition of, of East versus West, and I agree with you. If there was a total global system, maybe it would be capable of, of censoring the internet. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid, though, that there are the dark nets and there's the tor net, and there's, there's all kinds of ways of accessing things online that even the Chinese know about. But let's, let's take your assumption here. Marcuse talked about the technical rationality of the West back in the 60s, and he said, look, even though this claims to be a liberalist society, look at all the energy it puts into organizing against what's possible with these technological achievements. Uh, at the municipal level in New York, there are, there are bills against the digital manufacture of guns. Uh, at the state assembly level, uh, New York Congressman Steve Israel, New York Senator Chuck Schumer, they've all proposed bills to stop the computer-aided production of these gun parts, and then of course the, the United States State Department thinks it can control this at the level of the information. The West is doing everything it possibly can to organize against the suggested transcendence of its nation state. Have you actually been charged with a crime? Uh, no, but that'll happen. Yeah. So you're not under any potential <laughs> sanction? I, no, the potentiality, if we accept that, is, of course is there. So what's going to happen is I, I turn in some paperwork on Friday, and in about 30 days they'll look at it and they'll consult their technologists. This is another thing, right? The total administration of life. Uh, this process is, of course, totally immunized from judicial review. So whatever their black box decision is, they'll come back and then they'll give that packet to the United States Department of Justice. Justice will then decide, okay, you know, what do we want to do with this kid? And I, I think the United States has a clear example of not being very kind to its radicals uh, or, or really any leaker. And, you know, it might be a good moment to drop Edward Snowden's name here. What he did was tremendous. <laughs> what he did was tremendous. <laughs> We've got a couple of radicals right and, there. And of course, he's being pursued on espionage. I mean, they're going to All go to the ends of the earth to destroy him. And look, I, I expect no different outcome. I'm not trying to like romanticize it or anything. I just think they'll make it very difficult for me to ever kind of survive or come back from this. Because in the end, that's the scariest thing, the suggestion that of uh, the transcendence of the nation state. Uh, but you did take the plans down, right? Oh, sure, I took them down, but I mean, they you immediately... You knew by that time it had already escaped? The day I put them out, just like with our other files, they immediately went to the Pirate Bay, were pushed to all the other major file sharing sites, and then, of course, Streisand effect. Um, once the United States made it contraband information, it was even more interesting than it already was. <laughs> Everyone wanted to download it, just to have it, you know, just, to, uh, just the raw curiosity. Um, and so when you go to the Pirate Bay visible category, visible is what they've, they've termed for this indistinct period between the, the, the digital that can become physical. When you go to the Pirate Bay and you browse that category, it is nothing but pages of defense distributed and DEFCAD files. It's nothing but those files. I mean, they've, they've spread to every corner of the earth. Cody, you're a fascinating guy. I appreciate you coming here. I understand you are in a rush to get to the airport for another appointment. So thank you very much. All right, thank you. Yeah.